The question is that the motion be agreed to. Ian Lees Galloway. Speaker, thank you very much. This is a great day that communities up and down New Zealand will be celebrating because this is the day that we legislate to get drugs out of dairies. And I have to say, Mr Speaker, that it has been a long time coming. And I'm appalled by that government over there that has prioritised creating more opportunities to gamble and increasing the harm related to gambling ahead of this legislation that is designed to reduce drug-related harm. That is a shocking indictment on that government's priorities. And it saddens me, sir, it saddens me that this excellent piece of legislation that communities have been waiting for that drug and alcohol treatment, uh, people working in the drug and alcohol treatment sector have been waiting for, and indeed the people working in this industry who want to see a regulated, smart, cowboy free industry have been waiting for for so very long. And once again, which has been the theme of this legislation and the way this government has managed this legislation, we are rushing it. We are rushing one of the most worthwhile pieces of legislation that has appeared in the, in the world of drug regulation in a very long time. And this government places such a low priority on reducing drug-related harm that they are rushing at the last minute, in the last hour, before we go on a two-week recess. It is an outrage, sir. It is an outrage that they put such a low priority on keeping our children safe that they are rushing this legislation. Every moment of this process has been rushed. They left it for two long years after the Law Commission presented its recommendations. They brought this legislation to the House in February and it sat on the table for month after month after month sitting way down on the order paper because there were other things that were more important to this government than reducing the harm related to drugs. Then they made us rush the select committee process and we couldn't hear all the submitters and we could, didn't have time to get everything right. And then the minister presents amendments handwritten at the last minute of, this, of the committee stage, and then we get to today, where giving Sky City, selling legislation to Sky City, and binding future parliaments to, to not be able to address gambling-related harm is an issue of greater priority to the National Party than reducing drug-related harm. That, sir, is an outrage, and that government should hang its head in shame. Melissa Lee wants me to drop my voice. I will not drop my voice. I am angry at you, Melissa Lee. I am angry at that government, because you, the, that government does not have the interests of our communities at heart. That is why I'm shouting, Melissa Lee, because this could have been great legislation. This could have been a marvellous step forward for drug regulation in New Zealand. This could have been the opportunity to not only get the drugs out of our dairies, but also create for the first time a legal, regulated market designed to reduce the harm associated with drugs. And it will do that. But the attitude this government has taken is just appalling. It has dithered. It has wasted time. And here we are rushing this through right after that government has voted to increase harm to our communities by allowing more gambling and selling off legislation to a corporation. Outrageous. Mr Speaker, I do support this legislation. I think it's a good bill. It's been a very long time coming. And I'm pleased that members around the House have seen through some of the distractions and the things which have, um, which have divided us to eventually get to a piece of legislation that we can all support. And Mr Speaker, whilst this does 
do the job of, of getting the drugs out of dairies, there are a few things that could have been done better. One of those is to deal with the issue of possession. This is about creating a regulated market and is about ensuring that the manufacturers and sellers of high-risk substances get everything that they deserve and that those who continue to flout the law get everything that they deserve. And that's where we should be focusing our attention, not on the young people who find themselves in possession of these substances. It does nothing to advance the cause of this legislation to make the possession of an unapproved substance uh, a, an offence, and it does nothing to fine those people. And in fact, it will be an absolutely unenforceable con uh, component of this legislation. So I hope that in the future we will see fit to decriminalise the possession of these substances. The other thing I am concerned about is the new transition period that the Minister dumped on the table at the very last minute. The Minister who was not the originator of the bill, uh, the Minister who, who took no part in the select committee process, uh, the Minister who is a Johnny-come-lately to this legislation, who dumped at the very last minute a change to the transition period, a transition period that was deliberately designed to avoid a black market, which I have noticed that the National Party have been throwing around today the idea that a black market might be created. The only thing that will create a black market is prohibition. And my fear, my fear is that because we did not have time to properly consider all the consequences and unintended consequences of the Minister's amendment, that what we may discover is that by reducing that trans transition period down to three months, that a black market is precisely what, will be, uh, what, will, what the result will be. I'm hoping that's not the case. I'm hoping that the Minister is right and that uh, the manufacturers of substances that are up for approval will be able to prove within that three-month period that they have made some steps towards uh, initiating clinical trials and, and that the Minister will then see fit to allow those substances to stay on the shelf. Because what is really important is that the low-risk substances do stay in the regulated legal market. The last thing we want to do is create a black market by having effective prohibition be the result of this legislation. Sir, so one of the uh, aspects of this bill is a review after a maximum of five years. That's a, that's a good idea given that this is um, innovative uh, and world-leading legislation. We need to have a review after five years to see if we've got it right. There are a couple of things that I think are absolutely necessary in that review, if not before. The first is to consider the possibility of applying an excise tax uh, to these substances. It's what we do with tobacco, it's what we do with alcohol. It is a good way of, one, raising revenue to fund the uh, addiction services uh, that may be needed to deal with the problems relating with these and other substances, and two, to use price as a, as a demand limiting control. Uh, it, we, we failed to do that with the alcohol legislation. We do it very well with tobacco. I think it should be applied to these substances as well. But I appreciate that we need to have a look at the pricing points and we need to look at what the appropriate way of using an excise tax is. And finally, sir, I I, what I want to see is what the Law Commission actually originally envisaged, and that is a comprehensive review of the Misuse of Drugs Act. It is outdated. It is outmoded. It may have been appropriate in 1975, but it is not appropriate in 2013. In fact, the Misuse of Drugs Act is doing more harm than good in the 21st century. And all we've done here is actually created an added layer. So now we'll have some high-risk substances that are legal, some high-risk substances that are illegal, some low-risk substances that are legal, and some low-risk substances that are illegal. If that sounds confusing to people, it's because it is. Our drug legislation is utterly confusing, and what we really need is better than this, more than this, 
a true review of the Misuse of Drugs Act. But for now, sir, Order. because this bill will get the Order. drugs the out of the Order. The member's time has expired. The Honourable Peter Dunn. Mr Speaker, given the exigencies of time, my call...